Well, season's greetings and a Merry Christmas to you from our household to yours. Uh, welcome to VBC Daily 3. I trust that you are having a wonderful day, uh, surrounded by family and friends, uh, as many are as possible with the COVID virus. <laughs> but um, trustfully, you're having a great day. Um, and I know that we've had a wonderful day so far. And um, watching my grandkids open their presents and just kind of thinking on what this day really means. And that is uh, history changed on this day over 2,000 years ago, whenever Christ, our Lord and Savior, was born. And so huge, a huge event took place there. And so, um, and that's what we remember today. But today I'm charged with walking you through a passage in the Psalms, uh, Psalms 95, verses 1 through 5. And I, I, I trust and hope that you've had a chance to look at this. Five verses, um, but boy, they're packed full of stuff. And uh, so let's get to those. But hopefully you've looked at that three times. It takes about uh, five minutes to read those verses three times and contemplate what does it say about God, what does it say about us, and then what do we do with that? And so what does it say about God? Well, he's the Lord, and it's uh, uh, there's no other Lord but him. He is the Lord. He's the rock of our salvation. And I'm going to be looking down at the passage so that I can make sure I don't forget any of these. Uh, he's the rock of our salvation. And, um, and then it says, the Lord is a great God. This Lord is a great God. And um, I, I think I've found that to be true. <laughs> um, I know that I've found that to be true. He's a great king. And then he ends that little sentence with this phrase. And that's verse 3. He says, above all gods. Above all gods. And if you look at that, the Lord in this verse, in verse 3, when you looked at it, it says Lord is capitalized. It says God, capitalized, king, a great king, capitalized. And then it says above all gods. And you'll notice that God is a small God. And so a, a small G, that, that it's not capitalized. And so basically what's being said there is this is a God that's above all. And all other gods that men create or that men have idolized come from him. And that doesn't mean he created them and made them, and that's not what I meant by come from him. Ultimately, they couldn't exist if this God didn't exist. So everything that men create, everything that they idolize and that they make a God in their life, these little G gods that we all unfortunately do have in our lives, are they really, he's above all of them. They couldn't exist without this God. So he's this, I mean, think about how incredible that is. His hands know the depths of the earth. Um, uh, uh, the peaks of the mountains are his also. And uh, and then you think about the sea and all the depths and all the things that are in there. It says that belongs to him too. And uh, he made it all. He formed it with his hands. And, and uh, amazing. He formed the dry land in his hands. I mean, this is an incredible God. And so what does it say about us? So you just see the magnificence of God for sure, in these five verses. What does it say about us? Well, first of all, we're to come to him. It says, oh, come. And then it says, let us sing for joy. And sing for joy to this God, to the Lord, to the only God. And then it says, uh, and shout joyfully. So we sing and we shout joyfully. And then it says for us um, to come in his presence with thanksgiving. So we're to be thankful about this God. So sing with joy, shout joyfully. So we have joy and joy, two joys there. Sing jo with joy and then shout joyfully and then to be in his presence with thanksgiving. And uh, incredible passage. So those are the things. So what do we do with this passage? Well, it already told us what to do. You should be singing. Do you have a song? Are you coming to him? And when you do come, are you shouting joyfully for who he is? The rock of your salvation. Um, this is, we celebrate today the birth of a Savior, but we also look into his story and we see that he became the Savior of the world where he took his life and laid it down on a cross on the behalf of the world. So the, the things you're supposed to do are the things it says about us. So we shout, we sing, we're thankful 
for this God who has let himself be known by us. What an incredible passage this is. And so once again, I'm going to tell you Merry Christmas. Be back here tomorrow with us as we do a prayer time with you. And um, by then, all the frivolity will have settled down. But Merry Christmas again from Larry and Lynn Howard. My wife's not on this video, but we say Merry Christmas to you and your home. And um, we can't wait to a point where we get to see you again. So join us tomorrow for our prayer time. And then, uh, and we'll see you on Sunday in our live stream. All right? All right. Merry Christmas.